Hi, this is Jonathan Rotz, field agronomist with Pioneer, and today I want to talk with you, well, I don't really want to talk with you about drought, but I'm going to talk with you about drought because as a lot of you folks know, in the territory I cover, it's been dry. As you can see, a lot of the territory in Pennsylvania has had little measurable rain over the entire month of May. This has actually even gotten us to the place, as you can see here, that we're starting to show up on some of the drought maps. The obvious question that comes up with this dry weather is what is this doing to my crop? Fortunately, we're actually at a pretty decent stage for drought at this point in time. A lot of our crop is for the corn is V6 or before. This is a V5 plant. We have a few that are above that, but most of it's smaller than this. As you can see in this table, during this stage, our water usage is actually pretty low. Now, water usage comes in two forms. One is evaporation, the other is transpiration. Evaporation is actually water being lost from the soil to the atmosphere. Transpiration is being lost from the plant to the atmosphere. Transpiration occurs as that moisture off of that leaf is evaporated. This also helps that plant to be able to pull nutrients out of the ground. Since we have a very small leaf area on this plant, our transpiration will be low. As our plants get bigger and bigger, transpiration in and of itself requires more, and then obviously some of the metabolic processes inside of the plant will develop and have more demand as well, especially during grain fill. Evaporation also can be differentiated based on what the use has been in the past um, and the soil surface uh, as far as coverage goes. So if we have a lot of cover on our soil that's keeping that evaporation at bay, we will lose less moisture. If we've done things like tillage, that helps to speed up more evaporation every time we turn that soil, and then exposed soil after tillage will evaporate quicker. Now, when it comes to the real desire for every producer, it's what is this doing to my yield? As you can see here, before V12, before our large, largest scale plants, we're really only losing that one to 3%. Now that would be per day of stress. But really there's been very few places, there are a few, but very few places where I've seen signs of stress yet on these plants with curling. As we go forward, we are obviously going to continue to need to have rain. I think that's my number one concern currently is not that we haven't been getting rain, but that we have no excess. So we're going to need a lot of rain in order to have enough to get us through all stages down the road. One major concern of a lot of producers is during this V5 or V6 stage, we talk about producing that kernel rows around. Clarification on that is every hybrid has a different determined amount of kernel rows that it's going to set. We can take that average up or down based on stress, but it's not that we're going to actually take those kernel rows down so significantly that we're going to eliminate yield. We're simply going to have a, a detrimental effect on yield by taking a kernel row off. However, our modern hybrids are getting so much better at putting both kernel length and also kernel depth on as long as we have favorable late season rains to do so. Some other considerations on the management side. I'm getting questions about fertility. What should I be doing about side dress applications and things like this? One thing to always remember is that any of our stressors that come to a plant, nutrition helps to overcome it. So we don't really wanna skimp on nutrition, even though it's going to be hard to drive that nutrition to the plant as we have limited soil moisture right now. But I would continue to think about what is a realistic yield goal, uh, even with the stressors here. And then if you are short of that on your fertility, make sure that you're putting it on. Now, with that being said, as always with our nitrogen, and especially whenever we have periods of hot and dry like this, let's make sure that that's safened and preferably banded, and if possible, banded near the row. The other thing to really keep in consideration is our crop protection side. So a lot of our crop protection is down at this point in time. We might have some resprays we're planning on, but remember that a lot of our active ingredients have to have some moisture to activate. So you can look here and see some of the moisture that's required for different uh, types of herbicides that are out there. But remember, because we've got this extreme dry, some of those herbicides have not activated. So be ready that you may have uh, secondary passes, even if they were not planned, that you have to have to deal with due to uh, weed breaks. 
I hope that you find this information uh, helpful. If you have any other questions about this or any other topics, feel free to reach out to myself or your Pioneer sales professional. As always, I wish you the best of luck with all your Pioneer products this year. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.